Welcome to Revealing God's Truth. My name is Jack. I'm an evangelist. Part of my ministry is this channel, and our goal is to help fellow Christians to grow in Christ and to live more Christ-like so that we can show Christ through our actions and not just through what we say. If you're not a Christian but would like to know more about what it means to be a Christian, I will put a card above that you can click on. It will take you to a video that will offer more explanation and hopefully answer at least some of your questions. God tells us to let our light shine, and we ask that you help us to do that by sharing this content with others. We hope that you get a blessing from the following, and we thank you for joining us as we seek to reveal God's truth in His Word. Okay, welcome back to Revealing God's Truth. And I'm going to do something a little, uh, I'll try something a little different today. Um, it's not a different type of video than what I've done before. It's just going to be a little different format. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do a commentary uh, along with uh, a video made by uh, someone else. <clears throat> I've uh, mentioned this gentleman before. Um, he, I, I, I believe he is a a pastor. Um, I don't know it, it, to what degree it because it, it seems that we we live in a time where churches don't have a pastor. They have pastors uh it's, i mean i know that that's not you know biblical but anyway um i like i said i don't know where he falls at here but this gentleman's name uh as i've mentioned before his name is mike winger and he he has some some good content on his YouTube channel. Uh, don't agree with uh, some things that uh, he says and, and beliefs that he holds. I don't believe they line up with God's Word. Uh, but uh, then again, there there are other things that, that does, and that he, he does take a biblical stance on. And because we are at the time of year that we are, are at, unfortunately, we're you know seeing all the Halloween uh, things out there, and uh, even though we have a a, a video on this site that uh, I think adequately covers. Halloween and how Christians should uh, view Halloween and deal with Halloween. I came across uh, Mr. Winger's uh, video the other day, and I, I I watched it through. It's about an hour long, and you know it. He he's like me. He's he's long winded, and I I don't have a problem with that. I feel like as a child of God, if you are serious about the things of God, then you will, uh, first and foremost, as the person putting forth what God has given you, uh, you will not put a time limit on uh, God or, or the Holy Spirit. Secondly, uh, as a child of God, I don't think that you should uh, put a time limit on the Holy Spirit as far as, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm going. I, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you and 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 get what you got to say. But you've got this long to do it in, and if you can't do it in that time, I'm going. I just I ain't gonna bother. And that's that's sad. That's really sad. And you, you know, I don't know if individuals understand it or not. But you know, when as a as a YouTube uh, content creator is is what we're called we can see the average time that people spend 
watching our our videos and it's you know for for content that I put out which is bible studies and sermons and whatnot and the time that you you put into it to to try to to do the best that you can and 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 bring forth uh you know what God's laid on your heart it, it's it's really disappointing to to see the um the short amount of time people will spend you know to to supposedly get a word from God but like I said he he tends to be a little long-winded so his video is about an hour long so this video is going to be longer than that because what we're going to do is we're going to he, he has a video this this called the seven sides of Halloween and he he, he kind of breaks this down over this hour and I just I, I just wanted to to go through it and 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 you know just do a little commentary on it this will be the first one of this type of video that that I've done as far as following someone else's uh, content uh, but this is just this is my commentary on this we're gonna uh, you know adhere to God's word when given that the the comments because you know our opinions really don't matter but I think that this is a this is an issue and he he points it out and and you'll see as we as we go through it uh, the the issue that that I think comes up so I, I want to make sure that if if Mr. Winger sees this or someone that listens to Mr. Winger sees this, this is not a uh, a scolding towards Mr. Winger. This is not uh, seeking to tear him down in any way. Um, I, I I want he he is in a position to spread the gospel, and in that position you should strive to do that in the absolute most accurate way that you can and and that means through the words that you use through the 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 things that you adhere to it should be uh strictly bible and it should be accurate and so i, I i'm not doing this out of a sense of well i'm going to get him or i'm just going to point out his wrongs no I believe that iron sharpens iron, and when we have an opportunity to offer uh, correction or, or uh, you know, rebuke through love, I think that uh, we have an obligation as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ to do that. So let's go ahead and, and, and get into it, and I apologize Thanks. And um, I don't know that I have all the answers, but I'm going to try to give you some, some good answers and some direction that might give you wisdom on how to navigate this in your own life and how to interact with those who maybe disagree with you on the topic, um, rightly or wrongly. So first things first, um, I'm Mike Winger and I do this every Tuesday. I do a live stream that is meant to be... Um, uh, just uh, theology, apologetics, dealing with tough, tough issues related to Christianity. That's the main focus, main thrust. That's what I do and why I do it, um, is to just honor Christ, spread the truth of, of the Bible, and answer skeptics' tough questions, and help Christians to think and to think biblically about everything. That's, that's the goal. And that's what we're going to do about the topic of Halloween today. Now, now again, I, I apologize. I, I know I'm going to pause this at times that may be inopportune as far as what the what's showing on the the screen but i don't know of any way around it other than i can go back to my main screen i guess <clears throat> now what he said is right i mean you know as as someone that that does this type of type of thing as well that's true we're we're trying to spread the gospel we're trying to 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 help fellow believers but see, he, I, I'm, I'm called to preach. I'm not called to be a, a pastor. This man is, 
is apparently called to be, you know, from from what he professes, called to be a pastor. And he says, "Well, I'm I'm here to get Christians to think." Well, no, you're in a position of leadership. You should lead. That means, you know, you should you should give out an answer. This shouldn't be a well. I'm going to present you all the sides, and then you go make your own decision. No. You are a leader. You should step up and say, this is what God's word says. This is what you should do. And then it's up to you whether or not you're going to mind God or not. It shouldn't It shouldn't be a, I'm just going to throw some stuff out there for you to, to think about. That should be a given. You should, we should, as children of God, we should think about it anyway. As I unpack my seven sort of sides of Halloween, if you have comments or thoughts, please put them in the comments section if you're watching live. AJ is going to be sending those to me at the end of the stream, and I will uh, I will respond to your comments. And feel free to disagree with me. Feel free to challenge me. Feel free to just tell me that I'm wrong. Just be very specific, and maybe you'll change my mind. Uh, I'm definitely open to that. Uh, but let's, let's dig in. Um, Halloween. First side of Halloween, first thing I want to look at and discuss is the fact that this is not a gospel issue. Um, Halloween is not a gospel issue. Now, if you're offended at hearing that, then that means you need to hear it. Because when we take a non-gospel issue and we elevate it to the, the ranks of gospel, we do violence to the body of Christ. We create unnecessary division and we can't think clearly. We don't see clearly. We, we don't actually process things thoughtfully on our own. So I don't want us to overreact like this meme I saw earlier this week that really kind of motivated me to do this video in part. Um, well, one thing I want to point out right here is the first time I watched this and I, I, had, a, I had a sense of where he was going with his video but I still was on the fence as far as the end. But when I first saw this this meme that he's talking about, I I didn't have a problem with it. But then, as I as I look at it and uh, not necessarily what he says, but as as I look at it, it could have been written. In, in, a, in a better way and in, instead of the whole uh true christians have nothing to do with halloween it, you know christians should have nothing to do with halloween <clears throat> now when you say when you say true christians then and i think he points this out that you're you're, you're calling into doubt uh someone's salvation and you 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 you're sort of playing with the notion that just because someone does something that is sinful they are not saved well no maybe the, this person doesn't uh, hasn't you know obeyed uh 2 Timothy 2:15 and studied to to see whether or not this was uh, right, it doesn't make it right. It's still it's still wrong, <clears throat> but maybe they just haven't reached that point yet. To which you you as as a believer that that knows better should uh, attempt to to help them. This meme was thrown out on a Facebook page that I, I was part of, and I just decided not to even be part of it anymore, to be honest. Um, it says, true Christians have nothing to do with Halloween. And then it quotes, you know, 1 Thessalonians, uh, abstain from every appearance of evil. Now, I want to look at this. Look at th this represents a certain group of people who I want to start off by saying, guys, we can't look at it like that right? I'm super conservative. I'm ready to chuck Halloween, kick it to the curb. I wouldn't have a problem doing that. But this is wrong thinking right here or right there. That's wrong thinking. That's to say true Christians, as in you are not a true Christian. You're not truly a Christian. If you do what's in this picture, which is what? A little girl dressed like an angel going up to get 
candy from a house that has jack-o'-lanterns and a lady who's obviously dressed like a witch who no one thinks she's really a witch right she's but she's dressed like one and that's, well, that's an issue but it's not the same that that's that's not what the verse says though see it, uh, that, uh, that's what i mean we have to be careful about what we say when he says well you know no, nobody thinks she's a witch or whatever at the bottom of the meme points out the verse that says that we should abstain from the appearance of evil all right so it's not it's not about uh what your intent is it's is what you're doing uh something that is rationally uh attributed with you know something evil same thing if we're going to say that christians aren't even christians like they're not just in error but they're not even saved because of this issue then if that's if that's your position then please hear me out as a pastor as someone who cares about the body of christ you are in dangerous error and you probably have i'm just going to be honest with you you probably have a pride issue that's going on here where you can discount someone's salvation based upon whether they take their kids trick-or-treating something's wrong with you like i i do need to point something out here so you have for the most part you, you have two different sides of this issue you have those that uh understand that uh Christians should not have anything to do with Halloween. And then you have the side that thinks there's nothing wrong with it. And he, the language that he uses and the, 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 the way that he comes across speaking towards uh, those that think you should have that, that, that are straight up, you sh that a Christian should have nothing to do with Halloween, the language and attitude that he uses towards them is much more, uh, say, I want to call it edgy than uh, what he uses towards the opposite side. And I think that that's, there's a problem there. Because even though I, I, I think that he's right in, in what he's saying as far as uh, you, you cannot judge uh, the salvation uh, of of anyone, uh, and and I understand what he's saying, uh, but when we participate in something that is sinful, uh, that's just as abhorrent. So the 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 level of emotion and 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 rebuke is a little. Is, is a little uh, slanted a little bit. It's spiritually wrong with you. And I, I don't I don't mean to overblow the issue at all. I mean to be like warning you. You, you can't maintain this level of weirdness. Uh, you need to slow down. And you need to look around and recognize the gospel is the gospel. Let's make that the hill we die on. And other issues, important though they may be, they're not the gospel. So that's one error. One error is the people who, who elevate this issue to gospel proportions. But on the other side, we have another error, and I see this as well. In fact, this is what I see more often than not, is Christians that, who just, true. They, they won't even look at Halloween. They won't even take a close examination of, the, of what goes on on Halloween. They just go, you know, I feel good about it. It seems fun to me. Um, and since it's not the because gospel, they know it must not matter it. at all. And that, of course, is, is a mistake. Like, you know, eating healthy is not the gospel, but let's not pretend it doesn't matter. Right? Like, you know, you know, taking the right medical procedures to heal whatever's wrong with you isn't the gospel, but we shouldn't say it doesn't matter. So the two errors are one is acting like it's a gospel issue and two acting like because it's not the gospel, it doesn't matter at all. Um, so so before we get to number two, the second side of Halloween, I just want to ask you this question. Are you in your heart willing to look at Halloween openly and honestly, and respond appropriately as a follower of Jesus. And if you go, Mike, I don't like where this feels. I feel like you're leading me somewhere. Actually, I'm not really trying to lead you anywhere. As you'll see, as I do this video, um, I'm just trying to unpack the topics and issues one at a time to help you see it more clearly, help me see it clearly, and to be able to make informed, thoughtful decisions. Because real discernment isn't just calling something satanic. Real discernment is actually discerning what's going on. 
And so, are you willing to look at it and respond appropriately? If you've been demonizing things you shouldn't, are you willing to stop? If you've been, um, you know, playing at things being okay that really are questionable or problematic, are you willing to stop? So let's talk. Okay, before he, before, before we, we move into his, his second, uh, second side of Halloween, he says that we shouldn't treat this as a gospel issue. And so his, his point is that the most important thing is the sharing of the gospel. And that is absolutely true. However, however, I do think, and I have issue not only with uh, Mr. Winger about this, but a good many um, pastors, evangelists, or, or, or whatever, because they 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 do they put the emphasis that is deserved uh, uh, on salvation, and they kind of downplay. They don't. I don't think they mean to, but they they downplay living holy. Now, when we think of of spreading the gospel and sharing the gospel. It's not just about what we say. It's about how we live. Our, our strongest testimony to a lost and dying world is how we live our lives, how we conduct ourselves uh, in, in our daily lives, how we deal with things, how we deal with uh, death and, and, and trials and, and, and tribulations, that we put our faith in, in Christ and that we are able to cope and handle things far better because of the strength that we uh, are given through him so when you when you say don't make this into an issue as important as the gospel well if you're a believer and you're not living according to god's word and you're not living that holy life then you're hurting the gospel. So we have to be really careful because the way that the way it's presented is spreading the gospel is up here. And it, you know, this this kind of falls down here. Well, no, this deals with something that's very popular and thus it's very visible. And it is something that People are going to look at. They're going to see how we conduct ourselves in, in you know, as far as how this, uh, how we react and and participate or, or whatever with this Halloween. So to say that it's 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 not important as the gospel is true. But you got to make sure that you, when you say that, you, that you don't make that 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 sanctified and holy life be sound like it's down here, like it don't matter. Because when I believe, you know, he talked about how the the bigger issue is uh, how Christians won't even look at the issue of Halloween and consider, hey, is this something I should be doing or not? It's just, well, it's fun, and I'm going to do it. Okay, well, maybe part of the problem is it's been it's been turned into something that's so unimportant. Maybe that's an issue. If we look at let's look at um, Galatians. Uh, this is Galatians chapter two, verse starting with verse eleven it says, "But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face." because he was to be blamed. This is Paul. For before that, certain came from James. For before that, certain came from James. He did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were, when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. 
But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, Before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And we'll, we'll, we'll leave off there for a second time. But what you have here is Paul, he confronts Peter because he's being two-faced. Now, apparently, now this is not a salvation issue. This is not nothing to do with salvation. But apparently it was important enough for Paul to confront Peter and to confront him in front of everybody and say, Whoa, son, why are you trying to put the things of the of the Jews on the Gentiles? And and also, why are you being two-faced? Why is it that you'll associate with the Gentiles over here, but then when the Jews come around, you're gonna, you, you, oh no, we, we're gonna leave them, and uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're we're still with y'all. So that's messed up. Paraphrasing. So he was, you know, that they were trying to add works to faith, and Paul was saying that's that's wrong. So this was an issue that didn't have to do with salvation. It had to do with living holy after salvation. So it was, it was apparently, it was a big enough deal for him to not only confront him, but for God to include it in his word for us to see. So we've got to be careful. Yes, this is not salvation level importance because you're literally speaking of eternity in heaven or eternity in hell so that's it's not on that level but it's it's not something that you dismiss it's right up underneath it along with every other part of the christian life because our lives are living testimonies that's why it's important. We we have to be aware of this. We can't just uh, we we can't just act as if uh, it's it doesn't matter. Talk about the second side, the second side of Halloween, mm -hmm. and this is where the conversation usually ends. Um, and it, and I think it's a distraction, but let's talk about it. The origins of Halloween. Where did Halloween start? Um, well, as, as I've tried to actually look into the origins of Halloween, uh, oh, every year it's like I do this, like I go in and I dig into it. I'm like, what is, what, what else can I find new that I didn't find last time, you know? And I'll look up jack-o'-lanterns and things like that, or I'll look up the trick-or-treating practice, or I'll look up ancient practices related to Halloween. Here's what it seems to me we find out. Uh, and, and I'm not going to spin my video on this because I think this is a distraction, okay? I think this is a distraction. Yeah. Anyway. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm not trying to embarrass him in any way, so I'm not going to, I'm trying to not pause it at weird moments, but I'm not being successful. So he's downplaying the origin of, of Halloween. He's saying just because it, it may have came from a, a, a bad, uh, beginning that doesn't mean that that's what's going on now <sighs> to to me that just just not 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 trying to, to look at it from my own, but just trying to let the Holy Spirit, you know, guide me into to how I should feel about that. That just, 
that just seems messed up. Now, if you if you took something and you if you took a situation that was was done, you know, at a different time, and it was something that was just so absolutely abhorrent to the particular person, then they will tell you at this, you know, that you yeah you that's it's too close to that, yeah. You mean it in a different way, but it's that's just too cl see, and, and you can't do that. You see that that's what you're that's that's where legalism comes in, where you say, oh well, this degree of it is okay. The, you can push this little sand this far, but once you go this far, it's not it's not okay. Well, I mean. But it seems to me that the origins of Halloween stem from a variety of places. It's a melting pot of tradition. Okay. That is true, and it's not true. Yes, when you research the origins of Halloween, uh, you will find with with within the overall... Uh, origin, you will find that, well, these people did it this way, and these people did a little different, and these people did a little different. Okay, that, yes, yes, I, I, I agree with that. But that doesn't make any of it okay. That doesn't change anything. It, you know, just because you try to water down and downplay the origin. I mean, the origin is, is, is a huge aspect of this. And just because you try to downplay it, it doesn't make it okay. And, you know, I, I kind of relate this to the to issue I've seen a lot with, uh, you know, the so-called Christian music where you have, uh, I mean, completely ungodly churches that will produce a song that, boy, it sounds nice and it doesn't go against Scripture or anything, but the church itself, the practices that they practice are absolutely heretical by any stretch of the imagination. And yet people are like, but that, it just, I love that song. It just sounds so good. Okay. What happens? Now, now, this is one of those, again, this is one of those situations where it, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. We are supposed to be concerned about what, how we, how we live our lives because we don't want to be a stumbling block to either fellow Christians or to the lost. Don't want to be a stumbling block. So with that in mind, if if a either a lost person or a a a weaker brother or sister in Christ attends your church or watches that service online and they hear that song and they say, oh, I like that song. Let me look it up. And then they say, okay, well, that's from this church. Well, since they sang it, this church that it come from must be okay because why would you sing something that you wouldn't agree with, with what they teach at this church? And then if it's a weaker Christian, you have, it's, it's so easy to, 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 Follow, fall into the wrong path as a as a young believer. You've just facilitated sending this person down the wrong way. If it's a lost person, you've just facilitated. If they go to that site and they they start to see the heretical, crazy stuff, you may just cost that person their soul. And that's the way we're supposed to look at it. 
as believers in Christ, that is the way we're supposed to look at it. So this this downplaying of the origin is it's not a good thing. ...and religious practices, both Catholic and pagan, that have merged together along with some, some uh, Protestant practices ca- in England Catholics. that have all kind of just blended and mushed together. It's not... When you look at Halloween, it is not clearly discernibly from any one tradition or any one practice. So... That that may and may not be true. If you're talking about the, if you're talking about the, the 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 slight differences, but from from what these people did to what these people did. Okay, yeah, but the fact of the matter is that it's the 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 idea, the the paganistic uh, origin of it did not change. Catholicism was not the origin. It had nothing to do with the origin. The origin is how did it start? And yes, although the rituals, the okay, over here they 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 killed goats and over here they killed cats. Seriously, that's the kind of distinction that you're going to call. Here's the problem when you start addressing stuff like this and you try to please everyone. When you don't want to come down and say, look, I understand why you think that intent is more important than anything else and why you want to put fun before faith. I get that because I'm still in the flesh and I understand, but that don't make it right. When you are unable to take a hard line for fear of offending, this is the problem that we run into. Some say it's from the Celtic ritual of Samhain or Samhain, um, and that this is this was the god of death in the Celtic beliefs, and this may, may actually go back to my ancestors for all I know. And you know they would do certain practices that have a tiny similarity to what goes on at Halloween, but it's really vague and really not clear how exactly it's the same, in my opinion. Then you can say, okay, there's these yeah, European traditions where they would expect a visitation from the dead. Um, oh, by the way, the Celtic one, Samhain, uh, they believed this god of death would come and gather the souls of those who'd recently died, and it would happen around this time. So there's a connection That's between part of it. the dead and Halloween. Remember that. Um, with the European traditions, they would expect some sort of visitation from the dead near the same time of Halloween. Um, that was kind of the maybe pagan traditions that they inherited <clears throat> from pagan ancestors. Maybe it was related to Catholicism. I'm not entirely sure. I don't really care, <laughs> but it's interesting. Yeah, so um, then in uh, Catholic traditions, we, we've got we've got the sh- practice of All Hallows Eve. And see, when you start bringing in Catholicism into it, you've skipped ahead. You see, the 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 pagan ritual of it had already been in place, and then Catholicism, in an attempt to that they they saw how many people wanted to participate in this and but you know even even they even though catholicism is not uh biblically christian they they wanted to 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 stop people from participating in the the this this clearly evil thing so they wanted to put a a christian spin on it and as that kind of mess is still going on today but we'll 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 slap some Christian lyrics on some worldly music, and and that'll draw people in. You won't find anything about conforming to the world in in God's word for Christians today. You, there's there's nothing about uh, change the gospel, change the message, change the delivery in order to suit the day to draw people in that you, you won't find that because it's, 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 it's not true. It's not there. So when you start talking about Catholicism, you've skipped ahead. You've got away from the, the origin and you've moved into the, the, uh, evolution of, uh, of Halloween throughout the years. And then all saints day and all souls day. And some of you, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But this has to do, again, with connecting with the dead or praying for the dead or doing something related to deceased friends, loved ones, saints, people in the past who've died. 
So the one thread that seems to go through all of the traditions, whether you're looking at Aztec traditions, you know, here in, in the Americas, or if you're looking at European or Celtic stuff, it's all connected to the dead, right? Now, some of the other stuff, like trick-or-treating and stuff like that, like that's not really connected. It just kind of is happening. Um, okay, that part right there, and I, 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 I don't mean to... to to sound harsh but that is is straight up false it's just straight up false it didn't just happen now see this is this this is what i'm talking about when you're trying to soften the blow when you're trying to make uh everybody happy and not offend this is what you have to do now, Mr. Wenger, look, you know, listen to his, his videos. This gentleman spends a good bit of time trying to study. So I can't, I can't see how he missed this. I mean, it's 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 really apparent, and it's it's. it's one of the main things of Halloween is the the trick or treating. So one of the main things, and almost well, matter of fact, I would I I have not come across a a study on Halloween that did not include the ritual of the trick or treating and where that uh, where that came from. It didn't just evolve over time. It didn't just happen. There was a literal uh, part of the, the pagan rituals that that spurned this. I mean, it's... it's that... Uh, I don't understand why... It just sort of morphed that way. No. But how far does no. origins get us, really? Um, because my first issue with... Trying to say that, say, trick-or-treating is evil because the origins of Halloween it has has roots in paganism, at least some roots in paganism, some roots in, in Catholicism. No. Some roots in probably just local traditions that maybe people just do without knowing why they do them, you know? Again, it, it, it's it, this is called... I call it muddy in the water, but I guess you could call it diluting, diluting the medicine. Where you keep saying, well, it, it didn't all come from paganism. Yes, sir, it did. Just because the rituals were different from, you know, if you want to call it tribe to tribe or whatever the Celts and Druids and all, you know, whatever they called themselves, uh, it doesn't change anything. It it there it, it's pagan. That's that's the origin. It is pagan. The Catholicism thing was an answer to that later on. It's not like they all it all just happened at one time. But the, the first issue is it's it's fuzzy. No, the not. history of Halloween is a fuzzy thing. The second issue it's is that things change over time. I mean, do the origins of a thing always dictate what it means even after those origins have changed or the practices have changed beyond recognition? Like if, let's say, hypothetically, this isn't true, but let's say that kids going door to door and asking for candy from, from neighbors was somehow directly connected to satanic worship 500 years ago. But that today it has zero connection at all. That's Should exactly what it was. A kid is actually worshiping Satan by going door to door today. And I think the obvious. Again, what you're doing is you're trying to say, well, I have good intentions. My intentions are good and my intentions are what matters. Well, that's not what God's word says. Your in your intentions, I mean, the, where do you think the saying "the road to hell is paved with good intentions"? Where do you think that comes from? I mean, that's a true. That's a, that's a very true statement. <laughs> it doesn't matter what 
if if you're gonna okay if you take what what he's saying now see th this is the problem when you can't take a hard nose stance you got to flip flop around you're gonna see this in, in, in a little bit so let's say that you that that there is a satanic ritual and they dressed a certain way 500 years ago right and I'm talking about something let's you know this just you know, got horns and blood coming out the mouth and and what whatever other just just abhorrent look and then try to say, well, that was five hundred years ago. I can dress like that now and I don't mean I'm not I'm not worshiping Satan. Abstain from the appearance of evil. There's, you can't get around it. This, uh, this is an exercise in Christian excuse is what this is. When you, when you, when you try to, to dilute the sinful practice. Now, Jesus said that if, if, if we're not with him, we're against him. There's only one. Uh, uh, now, okay. Okay. Get this, there's only one against, that is the devil. So if it's not of God, there's only one other side. Some things may be more, you know, easy. it's, it's, it's easier to see that this is of the devil. But, I mean, Satan could be seen as an angel of light. So, this, 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 it's, it's, this is unfortunate. The seems to be no. But let me, let me build a case for those who aren't with me on this. Do you know that uh, baptism, for instance, the Christian act of baptism, that's what Christians do. When you become a Christian, you get baptized into the church. Really beautiful, important thing. I can't, I can't believe but we did this. Do you know that... That practice of baptism was used in ancient Babylon as a part of purity rituals and part of their weird pagan practices. It wasn't used in the same sense as Christians use it, but it was done. It was also done amongst the Jews. To become a Jew, you had to be baptized. The Essenes who lived out in the deserts uh, in Jesus' time and a little before Jesus as well, they... Um, they had baptisms. They did them constantly. Multiple times a day, they would, would dunk in the water and come out, you know. And these were about ceremonial, ceremonial cleansing. Now, would you say, hey, if a Christian gets baptized today, unbeknownst to them, they're really worshiping, you know, ancient Babylonian pagan deities? No, of course not. Like, of course not. Just because someone's done it in the past doesn't mean everyone who ever does it is doing it for the same reasons or to the same effect. So I, I think that this just... This right here is is Mr. Winger. He and whenever he's trying to 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 placate and not offend, he he pushes the limits. And this is exactly what was done here by trying to equate people baptizing. Uh, with you know the ordinance of, of baptism this uh you know given of from god now so i went and i looked this up because i wanted to, to verify what he was saying i didn't doubt that there was baptism baptism uh before the christian church baptism uh, but I wanted to know exactly what what it was about. Okay, so he he mentioned pagan, uh, pagan uh, idolaters baptizing. Well, they would baptize infants. Uh, they would baptize dead people. Uh, it was now he did mention it was used as cleansing, so it was wasn't baptism. It was bathing. And it was bathing with blood, uh, baptizing with blood. Okay, so you, you see there's a little bit of difference between their so-called baptism 
and the baptism that we do in in Christ as a outward sign of the death, burial, and resurrection. You see, we do this because God says, hey, go do this. Jesus did it. Go do it. Now, does, do you have to be baptized to be saved? No, you do not. And and that is... Mm -mm. I've looked at that uh, because the Church of Christ teaches that, and it's just... I don't see how you come to it. But anyway... um. I just it, it 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 boggles the mind that he equates that he that, that to to excuse this he tries to equate something that Christians do with something that pagans did and it wasn't the same thing now I mean, participating in a pagan holy day is not something commanded by God. Uh, going around and gathering candy is not something ordained by God. Uh, the ordinance of baptism and and the Lord's Supper, that's the two ordinances, are, are that's that's from God. That's we're we're told to do that. So I mean, I, I could turn it around and say, well, we proselytize people and we try to spread the gospel and, and, and you know, so that people will convert and accept Christ. I mean, I could compare that and say, well, that's what cults do. Do you see how awful that is? How awful it is to try to, to, to make an excuse by saying, well, Christians do this. Well, pagan and Satanist and all do this, do that same type of thing. You see how terrible that is? That's awful. Just in trying to make an excuse in order to to be able to do a a, a thing, to participate in this in this thing. Seems obvious to me. This is why I think the origins debate doesn't get us very far. Right? Because the origins of Halloween it doesn't if they're get different you than far the modern practices if you and purposes it. of it then it's just, it's a non sequitur. It if just doesn't downplay connect, it. in my opinion. But that doesn't mean the conversation's over. Um, as I said, this is a complicated issue. There's a bunch of sides, so let's it's talk about the third side. Uh, again, I think the origins debate is interesting. It just doesn't get us very far. So, number three, let's talk about modern practices. The third side of this debate is, what are some of the modern practices of uh, Halloween today and how they relate to how we should view this issue because what you find is there's a multitude of very different Halloween experiences that people are having and I think we should just acknowledge these first off you've got kids going door to door All right this is what most Americans think of when we think of Halloween we just think of kids going door to door you know you know kids in the neighborhood you know it seems like we get less and less each year doing that now I think he's he's over oversimplifying it for the sake of of excuse when you say that all you think about is kids going door to door, okay, well, what's with all the pumpkins and ghosts and people's yards filled up with tombstones and stuff hanging from trees? And and I think it's a little, I think it's a little bit more than that. Just, 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 just a little bit. Yes, but, but we have kids going door to door. That, that seems to be the case. Um, they go there, and to me, you know, you go. Is there anything inherently wrong with going door to door? No, not by, not in and of itself. Of course not. Um, you know, you meet your neighbors. It brings the community together. You have fun memories. It's a family activity. This seems like all positive things. Like I, I think every one of those things is is a good element, just in and of itself, just going door to door. Um, we'll talk more about outfits and costumes and stuff later on. But that, that's, for a lot of people, like when I was a kid, that was majorly, that was the practice. I, I did not grow up in a Christian family, so it, it didn't occur to us whether it was right or wrong to do Halloween. It was just a tradition we did. i dress up and I would go door to door. And you now, and when I got a little older, I started dressing up in some inappropriate outfits and things like that. I'll talk to you about in a minute. Um, but yeah, so we, we meet the neighbor. This seems like a positive thing. But there's another side of Halloween that maybe when you're a little bit older, you experience. Okay. 
it's a positive thing to go door to door and meet the neighbors and all and it's okay yeah any other day of the year you got 364 days that you could go do that but this one particular day is associated with an evil pagan origin why are you making such a big deal out of this one day if it's so positive to go to other and associate with your neighbors and all then why can't you just do it on another day if that's the reason but see it's not a reason it's part of the excuse. It's a positive thing. You're just you're you're being legalist and all because because you're it's a positive. How can you not see it as a positive? Because of the situation. That's why. Situation changes things. I mean, goodness. You don't go into church let's say that you went hunting deer hunting uh sunday morning before church but you was going to be at church and you got you a nice buck and but you didn't want to miss the service so you drag him into church and while the preacher's up there preacher you down there on the floor and you're you're skinning and gutting that that deer is there anything wrong with shooting skinning and gutting a deer no, that's a positive thing. You're, you're providing meat for your family. You're that's something that that you know we do to to as a, as a hobby. So it's it's something that relieves stress, and so it's a positive thing, right? So why don't you just go gut it and clean it, dress it, feel dress it right there in the middle of service? Because the situation is inappropriate for it. The same way that the participation of a ritual on this particular day for a Christian, it does not appear Christian. It just doesn't. Bible tells us to do all things to the glory of God. Now you tell me how it's glorifying God. It's not experience. And that is the partying. There's drinking parties and people doing all sorts of just ungodly partying type activities that go on. And they go okay, on around see, Halloween. Now Obviously, adults, if you're doing that, you're sinning. The like, adults that's, that's can't. That's a no-brainer. They, they is, can't associate easy, okay? because they're just going to be But there's party. another side of Halloween where, where people are doing outreach. And this is what, what me and my wife oh, do. We, we always hand out tracts and we reach out to our neighbors and we, we try to give them the gospel. And a lot of people in my fellowship, we use Halloween as an opportunity because it's like, hey, man, my neighbors are coming to my door and they're they're expecting me to give them something. <laughs> so along with the candy, I'll give them a tract, shake their hand, meet them, get get to know their name. This is probably this is probably one of the most difficult. Oh, the, the most difficult excuses to to say anything against because you know oh you're giving out the gospel no uh i mean let, let's look at the situation so you're not gonna you're not gonna participate in the halloween and instead you're gonna do something good and give out gospel but what you'll see here is he doesn't just give out the gospel. And I don't think, I don't know of anyone that just gives out the gospel when they, those that do this, they give out candy and the gospel. So here we go again, where we're told to be separate from the world, come out and be separate from the world. Here we are. We're going to try to mix the candy the world with the gospel things of god and and it does not work that way 
first and foremost, so you're not going out to participate, but you're going to let them come to your house. Well, how are you going to, how do people know to come to your house? Do you have Halloween decorations? You just participated. The only, the only acceptable practice that I could see uh, as far as the Christian and, and Halloween goes would be to have a church service that has absolutely nothing to do with it. And I would say if it doesn't fall on a Sunday or Wednesday, don't do anything. Do nothing at all. Because you don't want to have a service just because it's Halloween. You you know, if you're having a revival and it falls during that, okay, well, that's, that's fine. Don't give out candy. Sunday schools, don't give out candy. Goodness, I ain't never in my life understood how in the world my kids can, you know, come out of Sunday school and have bags with ghosts and goblins and, and, and things on it. And I'm like, we're in church. What in the world? And because my children, we don't, we've never participated in Halloween. And because my children don't want to, to hurt feelings, they just accept it. When they come back, they're like, here, can you, can you take this? So I just, I still, I still can't understand Why? It's one day out of 365. Why can't we just detach? What is it this that what is it this got you got its claws in you so deep that you can't detach? That you can't say, you know, this is just too borderline for me. I would rather err on the side of holiness than on the side of of uh, sinfulness. Um, give them something in the name of the Lord, along with really good candy. We give out really, really good, good candy because attract instead of really candy, good is, candy. Is, is not maybe the most tactful way to do it. Um, so we yeah we do that. So we use it for outreach. Now some people will do even bigger outreaches, trunk or treats. You know that they gather people in the parking lot of their church. We don't participate. Now, I've, I've I've heard this from churches. We don't we don't do Halloween. We don't we do not participate in Halloween. Uh, we'll be having trunk or treat uh, that weekend. Wait a minute. I thought you just said we don't participate in Halloween. Oh, we don't. That's what we we are doing something different for trick or treat trunk or treat candy candy dress up dress up so you're not participating because you changed one word hmm right They'll do other, other different kinds of things. Um, fall, fall festivals. Some people they don't. They're like, we're not going to do anything. Fall festivals come from the celebrating of the solstice. Paganism. If you want to have a fall festival or some, you. Know, don't call it a fall festival. Just call it a jubilee or what, whatever you want to call it. Stay away from the pagan imagery. Fall solstice, fall festival. We're not doing the fall. We're not doing no solstice worshiping or nothing like that. We're doing a fall festival. Okay. If you want to do something for fall, that's awesome. 
pick another day to make sure that you're not doing something that looks like what is associated with evil, do it a, a, a week away or, or, or two weeks away or what, whatever. Whatever you feel, if you are truly seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you will want to, to, to do as much as possible to distance yourself from something that, that can hurt your testimony and hurt the chances of someone else either growing in Christ or accepting Christ. Related to Halloween, but we're going to have a gathering and have fun. We're going to call it a fall festival. Now, I don't know how to demonize a fall festival. Like, you know, like we're celebrating, you know, the, the, the changing of seasons, which we enjoy, and we're just bringing out food and we're just celebrating. Yeah, I mean, in a sense, it's an innocuous celebration. Did. We're just having a good time. Um, fall festivals, Wiccans, I don't see anything Satanist, wrong with pagans, that. For some people, they... that's their whole Halloween experience. Now, on the other side, this is all this is all number three, the third side of Halloween, the different experiences people have on Halloween. You need to think about these because the next one is the part where you start to go, I never thought about that before. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what, he, what he's... Uh, I think he's fixing to go into the Day of the Dead, but before he does, I want to I want to discuss the 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 fall festival thing for for just a second. Okay, do you realize uh, that Halloween is a holy day? Okay, it's called a holiday. It's a holy day, and it is a holy day for who? It's a holy day for Wiccans and, and pagans and Satanists. It's a holy day. Now, see, they realize the origin of that day. And it, you, can, you can look up um, testimonies of, of those that, who have been caught up in Wiccanism and paganism and, and, and Satanism that have, you know, by the grace of God, uh, accepted Christ and come out of that mess and and they'll tell you straight up I won't have nothing to do with that because I know exactly what that day was for I watched this one uh, poor lady and she's like you know I, I wasn't into the really hard stuff but she said you would not believe the things that are done on that day by by some people and you know there's a there's a, a, a little picture that I tend to post every year it's a it's a picture of anton levey the um founder of the church of satan and he says that and i'm going to paraphrase because i don't remember it right off but he's saying that he's glad that christians allow their children to worship the devil at least once one day a year he's talking about halloween you see they know and they revel and the fact that Christians partake in this. That's terrible. Terrible. There are Wiccan and uh, pagan or um, uh, New Age or spiritualist rituals that go on on Halloween. And they specifically go on Halloween. In, in uh, Wiccan beliefs, There's Halloween, as I understand it, is considered a high holy day. Right to Christian, we're just most most Christians are just like yeah, it's just a day. People do random things, and I just have to decide whether or not it's I participate not no to what things. degree if I do or not. Um, but to them, this is a high holy day, and they do like various different practices and seances, and I don't know, you name it, th these different things because they feel like the veil between the worlds is thinner, and there's more spiritual activity going on, and so they do engage in these things. And to them, they look at they look at this stuff, and they go, hey. This is to us what Halloween's about. And we look at you guys and we see you, you're just kind of, you're sense to, to the, to the, to the Wiccan or the pagan. A lot of them, they think you guys, you non, you know, pagans, you think that you're sort of, we think that you're sort of sensing the spiritual realm come close. And that's why you start acting weird and you start dressing up and you do all these weird things, you know. And how, when they see that, when these lost souls when these people that are dying and going straight to hell when they see 
Christians participate in their holy day, how do you think that brings them closer to accepting Christ? Because like it or not, that's exactly what it's about. Oh, we think that you're sensing it. And so they, they look at you and perhaps some of them think you are participating uh, in this, whether you are or not, that you're like part of that sort of thing. To the Satanists, um, they'll, some it, Satanists, like at least reports I've heard from former Satanists, are that they'll actually do some pretty freaky, terrible, evil rituals on this day. Um, and uh, and that's, that's a different Halloween experience, isn't it? That's not going door to door. This is a whole different side. This is a whole different issue related to Halloween. And so in the, in the new age or in these other. So again, he, what he's doing, what he's doing by saying, well, that's a different part of Halloween. And since you're not doing that part of Halloween and your intent is positive, well, you're okay. You know, when my children were, were even little, you could you could talk to them about this stuff and they'd be like, Ugh, I don't want to do hell. I mean, even a child can understand when they're given the truth about this, uh, about this thing that that's not something we should be having anything to do with. Different religions, religious groups, there's a different Halloween experience for these people than there is for most Americans, I would say. Um, we do well to recognize this. We do well to recognize this. Another thing I'll point out is the Day of the Dead. Now, some of you have already asked. I, I just glanced at the comments and saw it in there. Is the Day of the Dead. This is this is something... Gen now, I, I want you to, 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 to watch this now. So we, we went from... We're, we're, we're going from... Well, parts of Halloween are not good... And then there's parts that are okay because of the intent is is right. And now watch, watch this shift. We're going from you can be okay here because of your intent to if you participate in this, you're just you're just dead wrong. Generally, we see in South America. Um, at least I know. I mean, I'm here in Southern California, so we see it coming up from Mexico is the Day of the Dead celebrations. Um, what is the Day of the Dead? Well, we have the decorations of the face, like skulls, and people go around. And, and this is actually a really big deal, the Day of the Dead. It happens, you know, at the end of October and the beginning of November. Halloween is part of that. But, but really, if you were, like, thinking anything about Halloween, the closest thing to it in South American culture, I think, is the Day of the Dead. They believe on this day, and they do parades and big, big events and stuff like that. They believe on this day that the spirits of the dead will come and actually visit them and come into their homes. And this is, this is what we call necromancy, right? This is contacting the dead. They will actually do, this is the standard thing. They'll actually do rituals to. I can guarantee you that there are people that participate in the Day of the Dead who conduct the same rituals that are just doing it because that's what you do on that day. That they're not doing it because they're trying to contact the devil, but that's just what they've always done on that day. So that's what they do. Now, they don't have a bad intent. The people talking to their dead loved ones may not have a bad intent. But Mr. Winger here, and now we we switched from, well, your intent, well, these people can't have any good intent. It's just all necromancy. This, to, to, to not see the hypocrisy in this change shows some spiritual blindness.
contact the, their deceased loved ones and relatives. They build altars in, inside their homes. And even in public schools, they'll have altars set up because it's, it's considered a national holiday in Mexico. And so they'll actually build altars. And is this Halloween? No, no not exactly. No, but it is a Halloween type experience that they're having in that culture. And it's but a growing. But this one is wrong. You know, they just made a big a big movie about the Day of the Dead that just came out. That kind of I didn't actually watch the film, but but my impression was that it sort of whitewashed the whole thing to make it all look Disney. You know, <laughs> but they'll Ooh. actually build these altars where they have they bake the food that their family members loved and they put them on the altar. They they have a meal and they eat it and they invite their deceased you know family and friends to be there and they kind of try to feel their presence and um, they put up their pictures. They put candles up to light their way. Um, this is a mixture of Catholicism and Aztec beliefs. At least that's what I was able to find uh, as I was doing my research was that, that it's really a mixture of all these things. The Day of the Dead, it's pretty clear cut and dry. This is a, this is like damnable behavior. You're contacting the dead. This is evil. Like this is evil. You're not really contacting the dead. You're probably just contacting demons, but this is evil stuff. And I imagine, you know, if... Okay, so, so why is it why is it that this is so much more evil than doing the same rituals that the pagans did? So you can you can look at you can look at the origins of Halloween, and you can see where all of the different rituals that that are done today were what what they were originally for put in put in a light inside of a a, a gourd uh going door to door asking for something and if you don't get something then you do a trick um the the dressing up and this is all at this at all for this day and, and and then we do these things all for this day but because of our intent is good it makes it all right but because these people I see I don't I don't understand because they're doing something now I don't know I, I didn't, I've never looked at Aztec you know they're the day of the dead and how far back it goes you know, it, maybe it goes back as as far as uh, the the Celts and the you know the Druids. It, maybe it does, but why why is there a difference with this? Mister Winger even said at the beginning of the video that the the commonality between all these Halloween things or or, or whatever is that it dealt with death. Day of the Dead. If you're from that background and you come and you see, you know, people in the U.S. dancing around and having a good time, just just going door to door, you it might hurt your heart a little bit because you your memories are, you know, seeing your family do rituals to contact the dead and seeing the parades and so. And, in other words, you know, they have like specific moments in. In other words, your testimony. can affect someone else. Well, go figure. In Mexico, where they'll like ring the church bells, the church bells, mind you, the Catholic church bells, to Conquer say, ding, churches. ding, ding, here come the souls of the dead children, prepare to greet them. Then on the next day, it's, this, it's the saints. Oh, the saints are here, you know, and um, it's creepy. It's creepy and it's weird and it, and it and it should stop. And it doesn't matter how entrenched it is in a culture. If it's an ungodly, like, anti-biblical practice, Amen. it should stop no matter how much you love it. No matter how Amen. much you, it's part of your DNA and part of your culture and part of your tradition. Amen. I mean, that's how, you know, Satan got the Pharisees was just get them to embrace traditions and make them the most important thing to them. And, um, and that is indeed the case. Yep. So the day of the dead. They dress up, they do parties, they have parades. It's actually a very rejoicing kind of celebration along with this solemnness and then the whole spiritism of contacting the dead oh, stuff. It's, yeah. it's weird. It's weird stuff, man. So that's also going on. So then we've got the people who are... here's a, Consider the complexity of this issue now. 
let's say you're a former Wiccan or Satanist or you were a no. spirit spiritual person. This is this is a uh, this is a common phrase, and and it actually because I wrote it down every time he said it, and and it, it from the beginning to the end, you see it increases, increases, increases. But it, he talks about how complex this issue is. It's very complex. I haven't seen any complexity yet. I've seen a a practice that come from anti-God uh, origins. I haven't seen I haven't seen anything yet that is a positive that would glorify God. I haven't seen anything. And you yet. did seances, but on it's Halloween. complex. And there's Ouija boards. You can go to Target and buy a Ouija board nowadays. By the way, thanks Target. It's very good of you. Um, you, 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 you come out of these ungodly things. You know, Day of the Dead, whatever it is, and then your buddy's gonna like, hey man, we're gonna go trick or treat. You want to come? And now, is the trick or treating in and of itself evil? I don't think so. No, but I can understand wow. how at least for the former person who used to be involved in the occult or something like that, this would really mess him up. I just I... okay. We're told to not be a stumbling block. So if it would really mess them up, why are we doing it? Why would you say there's nothing there's nothing wrong with it? But if that person sees it, it's gonna mess them up. Then guess what? There's something wrong with it. You know, we're told in 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 uh, I think it's First Corinthians, Paul's talking about uh, eating eating meat, and he's talking about how you know if 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 it's gonna be a stumbling block to your brother, you you have liberty to do this, but don't be a stumbling block. You know what he's saying? Don't do that around him, and I'll I'll get into that. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more, but. It's it's like he's flip flopping. It's it's okay because the intent's good, but see how it's a stumbling block. It's complex. And they would just not. be like, man, I have a hard time with the fact that my friends are enjoying this. I think it's evil, and it's not hard online to find videos of people who were formerly involved in those groups who were just demonizing Halloween. They're like, it's evil, guys. It's evil. Now I think that they go overboard with it. I do, but I think that I want to recognize the heart of someone I love. Who is stumbled by any people participating in in the process of Halloween? So that kind of becomes something I have to wrestle with. Gosh, you know, do I want to post this picture on social media when I know I that I have like, these former New Age I'm friends of mine that, that I'm going to stumble with that? Uh, do I want to do that? You know, I want to be thoughtful about this stuff. Uh, um, clear issue in Catholic tradition, uh, and this does connect with Day of the Dead, depending on where you live. But uh, Catholicism has a lot of different expressions, and they don't seem very concerned with. In all honesty, in Catholicism, they don't seem very concerned Again, with we're, we're, sticking we're strictly about to scripture or sticking is, stri strict, I mean, strictly to um, much. And so, you know, different Catholic groups will. So, in some places, they celebrate the Day of the Dead with the support of the churches. Um, in other places, it's a little bit less like that, and it's more like thirty-first Halloween is All Hallows Eve. Um, you're supposed to, I think, remember just remember the dead and get ready for All Saints Day, which is the following day where you remember those in heaven and then all souls day, which is on the 2nd of November and all souls day is the day where we pray for those in purgatory and we try to get them out of purgatory. And this is all connected with Halloween for the Catholic. Um, maybe they don't know it. A lot of Catholics aren't aware of this stuff, but, but that's the, the uh, that's the situation. So you've got like this massive, like, look at this. We got just kids going trick or treating door to door. We got partying. We got people doing outreach. We have fall festivals, Wiccan, New Age, Satanic things, Day of the Dead, uh, modern, like weird experimentations with Ouija boards happening on those days, Catholic weird traditions and, and un unbiblical things based on places like purgatory that doesn't exist. So it's complicated. No, it's and that's not like my that's like my main thing here is this this Halloween issue is compl complicated. It's complicated. He, it, it, 
you you just you just sit there and mentioned how over the top ungodly things are being done on this day. How is it complicated? Complicated. What I won't do is I won't I won't say that that this day of the dead person that who's contacting and doing a séance to contact the, the dead relative. I'm effectively doing a séance, not probably, watch. uh in the normal effectively. sense. Effectively, but I, I'm not going to say that they are they are doing the same thing as this little girl dressed up like a princess going door to door. Like we cannot say these are the same things. Why not? But they sure do all happen around the same time, you know, and they and they yeah. do somehow start to mingle in some yeah, places, yeah, they do, and so it becomes complicated. No, it doesn't. You don't want to demonize this little girl. You don't you know, mix the things of the world with the things of God. Create a bridge to something weird for believers. Things and, of light should have nothing I mean, to do with things of darkness. If I have my opinion as a pastor, if I could just like snap my fingers and make Halloween go away, I absolutely would do it. Then in a heartbeat, it would just be like, oh, good, that. problem solved. You know, but I would never get up and preach that you can't take your kid out to get candy because some Satanist Why? is doing a ritual that day. Like that's just that doesn't connect. Appearance the two just don't connect. of evil. I mean, look at this. Appearance of evil. Is that satanic? It's a it's a little little girl dressed as a princess. Look. Now see here here we go again. Here's the imagery, the the excuse imagery of of see how sweet this is, how wonderful this is. What could be wrong with this? Okay, well, is this like a uh, is this like a Tuesday in in February or a or a Thursday in March, and they just went to a little picnic and they wanted to dress up and all because that would be exactly what he's talking about. That'd be perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But there's one day. Out of the 364, 65 days in a year, there's one that this means something different. It means something different. He's, 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 he's comparing apples to oranges. You're talking about the, the people in the Day of the Dead, uh, you know, being necromancers. And talking and, and and he talks about them in an adult way, so it's it's okay. Well, now you're comparing an adult with these little children. The children don't understand what they're doing. To them, yes, it is just fun. But to a baby crawling across a floor with a fork to stick in the socket, they're just fine. They're not. They don't. Their intent is fine. When they stick that. St thing in that socket they don't intend to get hurt they intend to just be curious and be whole, living their little life it's not about your intent what in the world intent seems to be the most important thing here but look what we're having to do we're having to to, to compare the understanding of a child to the understanding of an adult and say, well, because they don't understand, it's okay. Well, you know, I was like him, except for the fact that I did grow up in a, in a, in a uh, Christian home, and I was taken uh, and, and did the whole Halloween thing. And it took me a long time once I finally, you know, started studying my Bible and, and, and you know, God uh, spoke to my heart about this kind of thing. It took me a while to get over that, that, that my parents would allow me to participate in something like this. The intent doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you intend it for good. It doesn't matter. You know what matters? Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
do all things to the glory of God. Just because something is fun, that does not mean it's to the glory of God. Uh, another little kid dressed as a, a bumblebee and, and one as a cowboy. Is that satanic? Are they, are they contacting dead relatives? Are they doing something evil? They got little bags. They're going to go get candy from their friends and neighbors or whatever. I'm like, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, yet I still have this concern. If it's not on that like day, many of you, it's true. But there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on on Halloween. But can we can we separate them? Well, maybe you can. No, maybe you can. You and that's, can't. And that's one of the decisions that you need to you need to work through. And you can separate them. You can separate them by allowing your children. Because I allowed mine this. I told them, look, guys, if you want to play dress up, that is perfectly fine. My my. Uh, youngest boy would dress up as uh, a star wars uh clone trooper my my daughter uh dressed up as 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 elsa they'd come running through the house with their with their costumes on nowhere near october because that's fine we understood that and they understood Hey, I can dress up and have fun and, and do things. And there's not a single person that look at me and say, Oh, look, they they're doing that for Halloween. Nobody could nobody could say that. That's what it's about. It's about the testimony. It's not about your intent. Well, I didn't intend to to um cause anybody to, to stumble as I you know, let my children participate in this awful thing. It doesn't matter what your intent is. We have God's word that tells us abstain from the appearance of evil. It tells us to do all things to the glory of God. It tells us to seek first the kingdom of God. It tells us to study. And when you do those things, you come to the realization that this is something that even if you're even if you're on the fence about it, you should reach the conclusion of I would rather be wrong and not be a stumbling block to anyone and miss out on a little bit of fun. I think what we'll do is put faith before fun and we're just gonna leave this thing alone and just just leave it alone. Again, I ask the question to those who are still die hard that they're going to do it. What in the world has its claws in you so deep that you can't let this go? The child of God is supposed to seek what God wants, not what we want. What God wants. And how does this honor God and it's something that you're viciously holding on to stubbornly holding on to does that seem right it doesn't doesn't seem right to me because this is not honestly what she's doing is not honestly related to like that okay <laughs> these are not the same yes, thing at it all is. they're really not um, it has to do with death. So in that, I would say the trick-or-treating thing it, looks to me like it's an issue uh, of conscience a, that each individual believer place. has to decide for themselves using wisdom, recognizing that like, hey, if you're in, steeped in a community that's strongly part of the, the, the evil practices associated with Halloween or something, then maybe you don't even want to trick-or-treat. But if you're kind of like part of a community that doesn't even know about that stuff, where like, you're like, no, we're just going door to door. Really? It's really nothing. Then I, I just, you know, may God give you wisdom, recognize that you should look around and assess the situation carefully, consider conscience and all that. But then there's another issue. I I, I can't remember what he's what he's fixed to go into. Uh, I may be saying this, but before, but anyway, in, in my notes, I just I, I just wrote down after another one of the it's complicated. Uh, you know, don't demonize kids. It's not the children's fault. It's the parents' fault. As Christian parents, you should know better. You should you should be close enough to God to know better. 
So it's not the children's fault. And he's talking about how, you know, all the, how sweet they look and, and all this. Okay. And, and how participating in this sweet little thing is, is okay. Satan be seen as an angel of light. And the reason that we're told that is because sin is seen as pleasurable for a season. See, you're, what you're doing is you're being short-sighted. You're not looking at the long term and you're not looking at the broad picture. You're not looking at what your actions are having on those that that see you as Christian and then see you participate in, in a pagan holiday. What you're not thinking about is as you let your child participate in this, and, and Mr. Winger in his own testimony here tells you how he went from, you know, the, the cowboys and Indians or whatever to, to dress in like serial killers, you know, later on as, as he got... Uh, older and then he's like how is that okay well again the the situation of things can be seen as completely fine but that's because that's how satan works through deceit right here when i was a little boy i dressed up one time as freddy krueger that's that's this guy right above my head here I, I did not, as I, as I said, I did not grow up in a Christian home. Freddy Krueger is a mass murderer. That's what he does. He's, he takes his knife fingers and stabs people and kills them and gores them and stalks them and laughs while they die. And I dressed up as Freddy Krueger. Why? I don't know. I wanted to dress up as something scary you were and powerful child, and dangerous and, and then pretend to stab people with my fingers. Does that seem healthy to you? <laughs> like, do, do, do these... There is, my point here, this is number five, my fifth issue with Halloween. Fifth side to consider. We've already, con number four was the pretty princess. We looked at her, right? Now we're looking at the gore. There is so much gore associated with Halloween. Nasty, dis Now, so here we go. So, now we flip-flopped again. So, now he's he's gonna, now, now with, with Mr. Winger, you know, I, I said that, that he needed guidance. Well, he didn't have that guidance. He didn't grow up in a Christian home. So even more so now, being able to look back, he should be warning believers that, hey, I didn't have this. I wish that I had known this growing up, that this was, this was something I shouldn't have done, but I didn't have that, so I... I'm here to tell you this is this is not something that's good. But now we're flip flopping and, and and we're saying, well, well, you know, wearing costumes on Halloween is fine. Here's the legalism, but it's got to be the right kind of costume. But wait a minute, what about their intent? You may dress up like. Freddy Krueger or Jason or 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 uh, Michael Myers or, or whatever. Well, you don't intend to go murder people, so that makes it okay, right? That's what we've been saying. Disgusting horror, perverted, demonic movies come out um, every single year around Halloween. Sick, terrible, horrible, wrong things. And then we play at them like there's nothing wrong with them on Halloween. But the um, intent is that, good. To me, okay, this is not an fun. issue of Satanism, but something's wrong with that, right? Like, oh, little boy, who are you? You're I'm playing an axe both sides murderer. of the fence. Oh, you're an axe murderer. How how cute. Ooh, scary. <laughs> oh, l little girl, who are you? I'm dressed up as a clown who kills children. Like, really? <laughs> is there. Is there no discernment? Is there no thought that goes in? That's exactly what I keep thinking. Is there no discernment? Can you not see that you that participating in a in a holy day that has 
all of the rituals come from pagan paganism and uh, satanic worship. How could you not discern that this is something that Christians should not be dabbling in? If not for their own selves, for the testimony that they're putting out to others. But here we are, we're we're flip flopping them because you know I've seen children, you know I've seen little kids they'll they'll, they'll you know when I was out and about more I don't I don't I ain't been to a place that had costumes and probably years now but you know you could be out in walmart or whatever and you you see children you know little kids well they they want this this costume because they just think it's cool it's got nothing to do with what the costume represents what the character represents or whatever they just think it's cool so their intent is good they just want to wear this cool looking costume so why not let them. Their intent is good. They don't intend anything bad. When you don't, when 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 you don't take a hard line approach to these things, it's all you. You're all over the place. Into the practices that we engage in, this is this is I think symptoms of people walking in darkness spiritually in their lives that they could um, enjoy this sort of thing. And for some of you who are Christians, in Halloween, think, yes. I don't feel convicted when I dress up like something evil. Like I'm going to dress up like a demon. And I don't feel convicted about that. Um, like something's wrong with you. <laughs> you don't feel now, convicted see, again, see, about here, dressing here, up here like something go. that is meant to represent the spiritual wickedness that's in rebellion against God. And you're going to imitate like, that? Like that doesn't occur like to you. Like mimicking a there. pagan like, if that's, ritual. You know, you, obviously there's a problem there. This is this is the side where I go, your conscience is maybe unaware. And you don't want to be aware, perhaps, because I enjoy it. Why do I why would I want to think about it that much, Mike? You're gonna ruin it for me. Don't make me think about it. No, so yeah. Well, I, I think you need I, to think about it. I agree with At that. At best, when we do this sort of gory, creepy, but you gotta weird be stuff, completely honest. It's just you can't ignorance. Be halfway At worst, honest. it's wickedness. The sixth side of Halloween. Okay. But before he before he gets into this. You know, you're talking about people's conscience and all, and and uh, people saying, "Well, I don't feel convicted." Well, maybe it's because you're such a carnal Christian that you wouldn't know the Holy Spirit if He smacked you in the face, and that can happen. A, a saved person can reach a point in their life where. They they just they 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 get so calloused to the things of God that they they don't appear any different from the world. Now, does that mean that all of the people participating in Halloween? No. But I think that those people that just continue on participating in something like this, that there's a there's enough things on Facebook. There's enough stuff put out there now about how Christians should not participate in Halloween that there's no excuse anymore. There, there, there's no excuse for you to say, well, I didn't know. Well, yeah, you did know. You avoided uh, that knowledge or, or whatever. What I want to talk about, that was the fifth, is the sexy on one side we have the gory and on, on another side we have the sexy and every year around halloween we see the, the the sexy zombie the sexy witch right the the sexy cheerleader the sexy dot 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 fill in the blank and there's a lot of carnality associated with this um scripture tells us first timothy 2 9 in like manner that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with propriety and moderation that's that's God's heart for you that you dress modestly, ladies or guys for that matter, guys who are trying to be all attractive the to the evil. opposite sex outwardly and overtly. That's it. That that is definitely. Like, how is this controversial? Like that's ungodly. There's something wrong with that. That's just the whole like, read your Bible. You know? yes. um, Jesus is not approved <laughs> of this, and 
I know that a lot of guys, Christian guys would appreciate it if, if, if girls would pay attention to this as well, but I think a lot of times girls, they're not maybe consciously thinking, I think I'm dressing inappropriately because I have weird lustful things going on in my heart. Like, I'm obviously not thinking this. They're just kind of blindly going along with the trends of the culture. You know, it, it just, there's something that felt good about it. So I wanted to do that. But all that stuff is just weird. There's like a carnival mentality. This this phrase carnival mentality it refers to how when people get together in certain environments and groups, they start to change their behaviors. Like normally I wouldn't do this, but because I'm at a party, I'll do it. It's, it's wrong. You know, like normally I wouldn't act this way, but because I'm in this location or because it's this day or this event, I'll behave in a way that I normally would be embarrassed about. And that's sometimes what happens on like Halloween. It's this Halloween. carnival mentality where we, this gory stuff comes out, mm. this this sec over sexualization of people comes out and that is obviously a problem having to do with the carnal sinful side of man and any christian this is black and white no christian should be involved in that side of it in any way shape or form that side of that it. seems pretty clear all right number seven let me share number seven then i'll then i'll you give you some advice for parents um at least a couple thoughts hopefully Hopefully this is helping you. I, I love your feedback, by the way. Please okay, let me know. So this is, the, if this this is number is seven. This is the last one. Sense. I, I hope to make the issue more complicated for you because I think it just is complicated. Um, it was so complicated. I hope this gives you wisdom. I hope so. It's okay, number seven, the yes. conscience. If, if, if there conscience. is this deep complexity in the issue, right? And there's some elements of this that I go, I, I, can't, I can't find a problem here, right? And there's other elements where I go, oh my goodness, look at all the problems here. You know, from the gore to the, to the, to the sexy, to the new age, the spiritualization, to the days when people dabble in stuff. I mean, did you know Halloween is like the outreach time for, for, for Wiccans and witches? It's like, here's the chance to get my friends to come to my seance because it's Halloween and that's what we do. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but because it's so complicated, now is where conscience comes in. So let me read to you the scriptures. Uh, Romans chapter 14. Let's look at verse 20. Th this is what the Bible says about the conscience. It, it has to do with this. Here's when... First and first and foremost, I, I, I need to point this out because uh, if, if you're not familiar, he's not using the King James Bible. So he, he's already... He, he's, his, what he's about to read is tainted to begin with, but... I just needed to point that out because that's uh, that's a problem. Look at uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 9. He's talking about our conscience. The heart is deceitful, wicked. It, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This is talking about our emotions. Our emotions are deceitful. And our emotions are wicked. Okay, so so don't don't talk about you need to let's go with your conscience. We need to go with what God says. Conscience comes in as a Christian. Number one, what here it says in Romans uh, fourteen twenty three. It says, um, but whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats because the eating is not from faith. For what whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. This is the first thing you need to know about the conscience. I actually have a, a, a two-part series about the, or no, one part. Anyway, I've got a video about the conscience uh, online. Maybe it's two. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, I recommend you look at it. It's a detailed teaching on the topic. But if you feel convicted about the outfit or about the participation in any way, shape, or form, if you're like, I just feel like it's wrong, then you can't participate because your conscience is condemning you in that issue. The issue in Romans 14. Okay. So if your emotions tell you that you shouldn't do a particular part of Halloween, then it's sin to you. So in other words, if you... If you say, well, I can't wear Freddy Krueger costume because I feel like that's wrong. But your neighbor right here says, well, I don't see nothing wrong with it, so I can wear it and I'm fine. He's Christian too. You see where you, 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 here's the problem. When you have an individual in a position of leadership as a pastor and they fail, fail to hardline 
something that, that the Word of God is, is plain about. Abstain from the appearance of evil. Instead of being a leader and saying, look, I understand all of the reasons why you want to participate, and I understand because I'm in the flesh too. But it's wrong. I can tell you all the reasons why it's wrong, but if you're not willing to follow God instead of man, then you're not going to get it. He's talking about Romans 14. Romans 14 is basically what we was mentioning earlier about refraining from doing things that would be a stumbling block to others. Now, uh, a, a preacher gave a good uh, example one time. He said, this an example of this sp specifically. He said that uh, him and his family likes to play cards, and I don't know what kind of cards. It's not they're they're not gambling. They're not gambling. They just like to whatever form of cards they play. They just like to play cards. Well, he has another uh, preacher friend that before he was saved. He had a real problem with uh, gambling at, at and gambling at cards. So, you know, he came over one time, and uh, you know they had planned on playing. Not not this other preacher, the the former uh, gambler, but the the um, the first one. He said they were going to play some cards, the family, you know, because that's what they like. And said this other preacher come over, and he come in, and he's like, oh, sit down and, and play some cards with us. And man's like, no, no, I can't. I can't do that. He said, I'll just, I'll, I'll come back another time. And he said, he, he went out, and he called him. He said, man, you all right? And he said, he said, yeah, it's just that I had such a problem with that that, I just feel like I need to stay away from it. Now, the and, and the the what he was was teaching here was that this man's personal conviction was to not participate in this thing because of his past. It wasn't not to participate in it because it was wrong. Biblically, it was not wrong, but because of he had self-examined his his self and his 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 limitations, and he felt it would be better if he did not participate, so that there would not be that temptation. And that's fine, just like it's fine for that family to play cards, because we have that liberty. So he said, what I would do is if this other preacher was coming over, guess what we wouldn't do? We wouldn't be playing cards because we didn't want to be a stumbling block to him. And that's what it means. If there is something that you have the liberty to do according to the word of God that is not sin, which is not participating in sin, which is not uh, having the appearance of evil, if it's, if it's something that is perfectly fine according to the Word of God, but yet could be a stumbling block that you know of to a brother or sister in Christ, then you do not do that around them. You do not be a stumbling block around them. Hence is the problem with Halloween. It is very open, public, and out there. It's not something that you just... One is it's just dead wrong because you are participating in something that is that, that everything comes from a Satan worshiping pagan place. So you're mimicking the rituals of pagans, which are Satanist. It's just what it is. You can, you know, be mad if you want, but that's just the truth of it. 
you are mimicking that. So the whole thing about that is wrong. But there are other things that, hey, you know, I can do this as, at, at, at home because I have liberty to do it that I can't do out here in front of people because it's a stumbling block to them. That's what Paul was saying. I, in, in Romans 14, he was talking specifically about meat that was given to, uh, uh, that had been offered to, to idols. <clears throat> Is about food, about what food is appropriate or not. He says plainly, like, all food's clean, but if you feel convicted eating that food, don't eat it. Don't partake of it. In the same sense, maybe, you know, going trick-or-treating with your kids is fine, but you're in your heart, you're like, I just feel like this is wrong, Lord. Then don't do it. Honor God by following your conscience in that place. Because your conscience not- can make an okay thing into a bad thing. And maybe that's the Holy Spirit telling you that for a reason. Maybe you ought to abstain and that you should listen to your conscience there. God knows in your situation. For- there, There is a difference between your conscience and the Holy Spirit. You had your conscience before you had the Holy Spirit. So your, your conscience, you got to be real careful with. That's why it's better to just go by this. Just go by his word because... Then you don't have to worry about it. You know, the Bible says that uh, we should hide his word in our hearts so that we don't sin against God. Well, guess what? When you are about to do something that you shouldn't do, and the Holy Spirit says, uh, you remember this verse? Abstain from the appearance of evil. And you're like, oh, yep, nope, won't be doing that. It's the Holy Spirit convicting you. It's not just your conscience, you feeling bad. It's the Holy Spirit convicting you from the Word of God. For you, that's the right thing. Um, But the other side of the issue is this. Let's say that your conscience does feel fine about it. Um, about some measure, right? I don't care if your conscience feels good about dressing up like a sexy nurse. Like, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's not a conscience issue. That's a black and white issue. The conscience only comes in when it's an okay issue. It can make an okay thing bad, but it can't make a bad thing okay. Think about that. The situation changes this. You want to dress up as a sexy nurse and you said it's just a, okay. If you're doing it on that day and you're going out in public, he is absolutely right. But if you're doing it, uh, I'm going to say a lady dresses up as a sexy nurse for her husband in their home. Perfectly fine. No problem whatsoever. The circumstance changed it just like the act of sex before marriage the act of sex is sin afterwards the the uh, bond of marriage converts it it's no longer sin one day out of 365 that's, I mean, I, I, you know, he, he talked about near the beginning of this that how, um, you know, more often it's, it's people that's, that's arguing, that as Christians are arguing to participate in Halloween. Why? Why, why is it so important to you? Why is it so much more important to you to do this than to... Follow God. Teach your children to take a stand and say, although all of these people, even people that profess to follow God, jump off that bridge, you show them that you will take a stand and you will stand with God and you won't do it no matter how much fun is involved. What you're doing is you're teaching your child to put fun before faith and they're going to wind up, if they're, if, if they're not saved, they may just wind up in hell because of it. Because you taught them that 
Hey, you gotta have some fun. That's evil. All right, but let's say your conscience is fine, but you have to think about other people's conscience as well. Another thing to consider. Um, in Romans 14, 20, it says, do not for the sake of food or for the sake of trick or treating or candy, <laughs> destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone again. to make another stumble by what he eats. It is good to, um, uh, where I just lost my place. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. Um, this is the issue where I go, hey, I realize that maybe it's okay in my conscience. I feel fine about it. I really, really believe this is a pure thing before the Lord. But I know it stumbles my, say, my wife, my husband, my kid, my dad. So why would I... Look. This is a different type of situation. Again, this situation is different because what you do is out there in front of the entire world. It's in front of everybody. We're not talking about something that you do at home. So this idea that I, I just don't feel convicted about it and I just, you know, I, I just think it's just fine. Stop saying that. In this situation, it's not fine. It is sinful. Stop trying to appease and not offend people. It is sinful. This is not a legalism thing. The Bible says to stay away from witchcraft. This is it, it, it's a it's a pagan ritual that you are mimicking. It doesn't matter if you change trick, trick or treat into trunk or treat. You changed one word. You didn't change anything. You're participating in something that mimics a satanic ritual. I don't understand why it's so difficult. I don't. I don't understand why it's so difficult to so many. Participate in something that stumbles them, even though that thing's fine. I love them too much to put them through that because they're more valuable than my freedom. That's the consistent teaching in scripture is that I curtail my freedoms. I, I, uh, I give up some of my freedoms that I might be a blessing to others Sacrifice. who don't have those same freedoms. And that's the conscience issue. Um, Obviously, you know, actual pagan things, carnal or ungodly outfits and actions, that's that's off limits. You know, this is, uh, he, he just he just flip-flopped again. Pagan things, but you're mimicking a pagan ritual. This this thing about the conscience, you know, it's, it's let your conscience be your guide. That is wrong. No. Heart is deceitful. You know, this this way of thinking, this let your conscience be your guide. Uh, here's the here's a, a a subject, and I just I'm I'm not gonna tell you it's right or it's wrong. I'm just gonna put it out there and let you decide uh, whatever. I'm not gonna help lead you into the to the right place. This permissiveness is exactly why we are where we're at right now as the church. It's why we don't have true revival. It's why we have ice cold Laodicean churches, why uh, preachers are just standing up and just going through the motions, basically. It's, it's just it's a, this permissiveness with God's word. Permissiveness is the opposite of holiness. Holiness is a it, it means you, you're trying to to live closer and closer uh, to to God through your life and how you live, and it's it's a separation from the world. So this uh, it's and you know Jesus said the way to heaven is narrow and straight. So you're having to 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 not be as permissive in in being holy and living for God. You can't be permissive. 
but you go the opposite way, the more permissive you are, the easier it is, the more things you can do, uh, the more people you're going to draw. And when you do that, you get to the point to where you, per you permit so many sinful, carnal things in your life that now you're no good for God. But, you know, whether you're going to go door to door for candy or hand out tracks or have a trunk or treat, these are conscience issues. These are wisdom issues. These are may God give you wisdom in your scenario type issues. So for parents, um, I had a, a gentleman uh, named David from Belgium who sent me a question ahead of time because he, he can't he can't be a part of the live stream because of the time difference between here and Belgium. But he asked for advice for parents who deal with this issue in schools. Should we keep them home for a bit or what is what he asked? And I'll say here, it totally depends on that school and your situation. My advice in this situation is to teach your children early that this is something that you just should not do. Tell them the truth. Tell them where it comes from. Don't worry about what they may say to another child. I... I I had to, to, to deal with uh, several teachers throughout the years uh, to, to let them know that, hey, our, our children don't do this. And then my, my children uh, reached the point to where didn't have to say nothing. They, on their own, they was, yeah, we don't, we don't do that. Now, they knew it would... They would get persecuted for that. They would be made fun of, or, or now they, they would always send them away. They would send them to the library shamefully. You go over here because, uh, you know, we're going to do this evil thing. Guess what? Sometimes to stand for God, you're going to be alone. It's teaching your children. Teach your child from the time they are young that, yes, this looks fun, and you're going to see these people that, that seem to be having fun. Teach them God's Word. Sin is pleasurable for a season. Get them in God's Word. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This is a learning Thing. This is a huge learning thing to show them when the world is participating in something terrible and evil, you got to be the one that takes a stand and says, I am going to stand for God. What more of a learning situation for a child to show them that can you have than Halloween? I, I, I'm, I, I don't quite get it, but, you know, Mr. Winger says if it was up to him, he'd just do away with it. Okay, that's wonderful. That's great. You don't talk like it, except for those one one or two times, but that's, you know, that, that's wonderful. But since it's here, as far as your children are concerned, use it to teach them in a difficult situation to take a stand. So if I live in Mexico and my kids are going to be part of like the day of the dead and when they go to school, there's going to be an altar there and they're going to be encouraged to bring offerings to dead, dead loved ones and to, to, yeah, I'm keeping them home from school. Like that's pretty easy. But if, if my kids going to school and they're just seeing other people dress up sometimes in outfits, I don't really know that that matters, but maybe, you know, it stumbles your kid. May God just give you wisdom. Uh, don't worry about what everybody else thinks about this issue, you know, between you and the Lord. Just be like, Lord, what is what is wisdom on this issue? Because um, it really depends on where you're at and your situation and your family and your kid and as far where as, you live. So uh, yes I think that stuff yes really, no. really depends. So that's the seven sides of Halloween. I want to take your guys' questions now, um, whatever okay, so, whatever it is you, you might I mean, want to this, share. Um, this video is, how long is it? Two hours? Wow. This went way longer than I thought it would. I knew it was going to be long, but I didn't think it was going to be this long. I was going to do some of the some of the questions, but uh, I'm just I'm going to leave it with that. But 
I, I think I, I hope this is this has been a help to show not necessarily one side or the other but to show someone that is is kind of on the fence and back and forth and this is permissive because I think it is and this is not permissive because nothing based on God's word, but I just feel like this is, you know, to have a contrast to that. Someone saying, you're being a hypocrite. You're using earthly wisdom to try to make a, a, a spiritual decision and, and it's not working for you. So, I, I I hope it's helped. Um. I, I I wish there was a way I could send this to Mr. Winger to because again I, I this is not a this is not a a finger pointing at him because I would hope that he would look at it and be like you know that I under I, I, that that does make sense. But I don't. I don't. I've I've tried to to get in touch with him before, and just to no avail. But again, this this is not to down him, even though he is wrong in in, in this particular instance. But you know, there's there's other times where I I, I do agree with him, but. Uh, this. This thing of Halloween for the Christian is not complicated. It's not. And it's only complicated when we try to uh, to do something ungodly. I mean, when you're trying to participate in something that is clearly against God and the teachings of God and the things of God and it's going to be complicated because you've got to make some excuses and then your excuse if it you know you need to get them to line up so that you don't look like a you know like you don't know what you're talking about and then you realize well man I can't get it to line up because this and that. I mean, it's just, it's awful. It's terrible. So, I mean, even if you don't understand, the key is wanting to, to follow God. And then I, I, I know from experience that if you want knowledge from God, truly want it, uh, not what not not for God to tell you what you want to hear, but you really want to know what the truth is and are willing to 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 change uh, based upon what uh, He tells you. Uh, he He will not hide it from you. He will th there w there will be a way He gets you that uh, that word. So for for those that are truly seeking the truth about this. I don't see how there's a problem. Um, but uh, I do agree with Mr. Winger that I believe that there's far more individuals that they don't even want to know. And then I think that there's those that they're going to deny it anyway. It's all in, it's all, they just, they're just having fun. Well, when they're 16 and, you know, you get a call from the cops saying that they've been caught drinking, they was just having fun. And, and, you know, that will anger some people because they don't want to accept that that's the way it is. But the truth of the matter is, is that's exactly how it is. It, this, this stuff leads into. It's just, uh, you're making too big a deal. I'm really not. I'm really not, because we're not talking, we're not talking about, you know, 
well, I want to go to the Star Wars uh, thing. Okay, fine. It's fantasy. We know that it's entertainment. It's it's not rooted in some, uh, you know, pagan uh, religion. It's it's just a, a a fantasy movie thing. Okay, fine. Go see you. Go see you thing. But you know if if a if your child comes up to you and says, "Well, hey, I there's this uh, girl at school and she's a a Wiccan and she invited me to go with her this weekend to this uh, this Wiccan festival." It's not the same thing. So anyway, I, I, I again, I apologize that it went this long, but I, I try to give stuff the time that it, you know, that I think it needs, and and like I said, I just, I, I really intended, as as the video was playing, to kind of jump through. But I just didn't feel led of the Holy Spirit to do that. I just uh, I, th I thought that it would be better just to let Mister Wangers uh, to not skip anything, so that you know nobody can come back and say, "Oh, well, you you skipped." He probably clarified or whatever. And I just I'd rather just be straight up and take longer than uh, you know seem to be underhanded or whatever. Again, no. No disrespect to Mr. Wenger. I, I I would really like to to be able to have a uh intelligent discussion about things like this with with individuals like him, but I realize that I'm I'm not in that realm of popularity. <laughs> but uh but I do I, I I hope this helps and I hope maybe it you know that it not not makes you think, but I hope that it points out to you how awful it is for a child of God to participate in this thing called Halloween. 